Hey guys, so two weeks ago my friend Michael and I went for a hill walk and our idea was that we'd go out for a nice day, we'd get some exercise, we'd catch up with each other and we would record the whole journey with the Fujifilm X-T4. So the idea was that we'd just show you the Scottish countryside, we'd have a nice little day out and we'd show you it all. But unfortunately I can't show you the video that I wanted to show you in this video. I was hoping to have that whole video for you guys but unfortunately I'm not able to do that. I am going to be able to show you some of the clips that we recorded but I'm not going to be able to show you the video that we did record because there was no problem with the camera or with the lens but there was a problem with the audio. No problem with the microphone. This was 100% my fault, 100% my fault for not setting up the audio settings correctly. And it's very difficult to actually set that up correctly because of wind when you're going uh, walking in the hillside. Now, I'm sure most of you watch YouTube, you watch videos online, and you might be under this misconception that everything always goes to plan. It doesn't. Things can go wrong with writing to the file, with lighting, with audio, and not just from a recording point of view. Sometimes you can just forget what you're going to say, or you misspeak, or you say something wrong. Now, you don't normally see these types of things because you just see the finished product. You see the final video, and we have removed all of our mistakes and anything that makes us look stupid. Now, the idea was, from a filming perspective, the idea was that I would use the action camera, and when we were going to the hill, this is us in the car, uh, when we were going to the hill, I'd film the journey in the car, then we'd film the whole kind of experience with the camera, going up the hill and going down, and then I'd film the journey back. Now. The, the journey back has been uploaded. I uploaded the video two weeks ago and I, you know it showed me and Michael in the car just having a chat about our day out. The journey there with the action camera, the footage can actually be used. I can use some of the clips that I recorded and I think it would have been okay for the video that I had in mind, but I couldn't just show you the whole thing because we chose to record at 4K at about 30 frames per second or so and Unfortunately, I chose the higher write speed of about 100 megabits per second instead of 50. Now, I'd previously always been recording at 1080p using this action camera, and perhaps because it was a warm day, perhaps because this was in the window, and perhaps because we chose that higher file size, this was constantly overheating. So on the way there, this was overheating, and the recording would stop, and then it would cool down, and we could start recording again. So... We had a little bit of problems with this going there, but nothing major. It was just us messing about with the settings. The big problem arose with the Fujifilm X-T4. Specifically, it arose with the audio no noise. Now, with regards to the Fujifilm X-T4, this was my first real opportunity to get out with the camera, test it, make mistakes, which clearly I did and just get a feel for the camera and what it can do and what it was all about, etc. And I did manage to do that. I mean, this isn't a difficult camera to use. You can set it up, you can pick your settings, etc. But, I mean, I can sit in the menu here and play around with the settings and choose 400 or 200 or 100 megabits per second writing, but it's not until you actually go out and record the files, then come back to your computer and start editing them that you know if those settings are really optimal for what you're trying to do. So it was important for me to get out and try it out. Now, what I will say is from a video quality point of view, um, what I was trying to do was really look at stabilization. I was trying to look at the kind of warp effect that you get with stabilization with cameras sometimes. And with the 10 to 24 lens that I've got here, this does have optical image stabilization and the camera does have an IBIS as they call it, in-body. Uh, image stabilization. I did find that at the, the kind of wider end at 10 millimeters, so when I'm at the kind of GoPro action camera kind of wide angle, there was a lot of kind of wobbling at the side. But when you pulled the, the camera lens in and you kind of focused about 16, 18, 20 millimeters, you know, kind of brought the shot in, I didn't have any real problems with uh, kind of wobbling or warping or stabilization. It seemed a little bit better. Footage, I, you know, as far as the video quality footage, I was really, really impressed with it. But the problem that I had was audio. Now, this is the, the microphone that I used. This is the video micro that I used. And it did have major problems with it. Now, I'm going to show you an example of it just now. 
This is when we were starting the journey up the hill. Now, the footage here, actually, the audio uh, quality is actually okay, but you'll see what I mean in a second. Time has started. We're turning back now. Right, so that's where we've just started from. From the car park. And now we're going up to the top, which I can't really zoom in because this doesn't have a huge range. In fact, I'm going back the way. <laughs> I went from 24 to 10. But the big question there was take a jacket or not take a jacket and we've went without one. This no. could be a big mistake. But what isn't a mistake is, look at this, white socks and boots. <laughs> it's the best combo ever. What we walked about five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Hoffed. So you probably noticed there, there was a lot of kind of, it's almost like electrical noise because of the wind noise. And on those clips that you just saw, it wasn't that bad actually, it wasn't too bad. But in other parts of the video, it was a lot worse. And I'll, I'll give you a short example of that just now. I don't want to play it too long because it'll hurt your ears, but I'll give you a small example of it just now. See when you get older, falling stops being funny when you do it yourself. Like, it's major injuries and it takes weeks to get better from it. So as you can see there, the audio was unusable and it was really, really horrible to hear that. There was a lot of kind of electrical noise. The wind noise was crazy. And unfortunately, it was unusable. Now, I recorded probably 40, 50 minutes of footage from that day out using the camera. And I had some clips where the audio was okay. Some clips, like I showed you earlier, where there was a little bit of buzzing and then lots and lots of clips where it was unusable because it was so much kind of wind noise and it was just clipping. You know, we were into the red and we were clipping. Now, I kind of know the mistakes that I made there. I, I kind of know what I did wrong. Now, I have a few different microphone options and I am looking to buy another microphone, but I think the way that I set it up, I might have had the same problem, whatever I did. Now, I've got the Rode Video Micro. It's not really an expensive microphone. My Shure VP83 is better. The reason I didn't use the Shure VP83 on the D was because in the house, I had used the Video Micro. I had set it to auto. And in the house, the Video Micro was performing excellent. It was excellent. It was absolutely excellent. It was performing excellently. Absolutely no problems. And in comparison to the Shure, I had to set the levels manually at home to get it right wasn't a hassle, but you had to kind of tinker with the level. So I just thought it will be easier if I just choose auto with the video micro. Now, that was perhaps a mistake because I could have set the audio levels manually using this. But I have had problems with that in the past because what I've had before with this microphone is you set the, the audio levels perfectly in the camera and here and everything is going great. But then you go outside, there's a little bit of wind noise and what's perfect inside is not perfect outside. But I do have, you can see here, a Rykote Windjammer, Mini Windjammer, or Dead Kitten. I do have one of those uh, which I can put over this microphone. And it does give me the wind protection that I did need on that day. I did need something like this on that day. But I chose the video micro. micro. Now the problem is with auto is when you're recording outside in a howl, there's absolutely no shelter from the trees. The wind noise is crazy. And it wasn't even that bad, you know, from a, a, a how walking point of view, it wasn't the windiest of days, but certainly it was enough to cause problems with this microphone. And it's very difficult for auto mode, auto recording mode to handle wind noise effectively. It's very, very difficult. Firstly, is that from a hardware point of view, this isn't a great mic and this isn't the best dead kitten you could get outside. You really do need something better like that. But if you imagine wind noise, it can be calm, 
and then it can be very, very loud very quickly. And it's this kind of, you know, spiking up very quickly that causes problems with the camera and the microphone to record audio efficiently. Now, what I should have done, what I should have done is take it off auto mode in the, the Fujifilm X-T4 and basically just change the settings. So instead of auto, maybe set the, the audio levels really low, really low, like four or five or something like that out of 20 or whatever it is, 30. And just set the audio levels low so that I didn't get any clipping. And then later I could try and boost the audio. Now that's not exactly ideal either because when you when the audio being recorded isn't high enough, you know, you, you kind of have to drop it down to allow those spikes. But when the audio isn't high enough, when you boost it up and try and optimize the vocals, sometimes it doesn't come out too well in the editing process as far as, you know, fixing audio. But the audio would have been a lot more usable if I didn't use auto and I just set the audio levels really, really low and then boosted them in, in post-production. So from a recording point of view, I messed up. No, no, no qualms about it, I messed up. Nothing to do with the camera. I suspect I might have been able to get something using this mic, but I didn't do it properly. Um, but I did have a fun day out, and that's that's you know I, I'm I'm not too annoyed about it all because me and Michael had a great day out. We got to see some of the countryside, we got some exercise, and I got to record some footage with this camera to get a better understanding as to what it can do. Uh, and like I was saying at the start, you know the footage does seem a little bit kind of wobbly at the wide end, but when you pull it in, optimization uh, the stabilization sorry is a lot better. The quality of footage looks a lot better as well. And what I will say as well, this is something I quickly realized, the battery life on the Fujifilm X-T4 is nothing short of outstanding. It is amazing. We took so long to walk up that hill. Like normally you'd walk up in like 50 minutes or an hour, but I think it took us like an hour and 25 minutes or something like that because we were messing around, we were taking pictures and we we're just, you know, generally just playing around with the camera and recording clips. We recorded clips all the way up, switching it on and off and recording like five minutes, three minutes at a time, etc. All the way up, taking photos, all the way back down as well. And it went from five bars down to two bars. So we basically used about 60 to 70% of the battery in a couple of hours. And I had a spare battery, but I never had to use it. So despite the fact that I messed up that day, I was really impressed with the quality of the footage that you can get from the Fujifilm X-D4. I do understand now that if I'm outside, I'm going to have to pay closer attention, much closer attention to the audio levels to make sure that the, the the wind noise isn't going to spike things up and cause problems like, you know, I experienced. But I was impressed with the camera. I was impressed with the footage. I was impressed with everything, really. I really was impressed with the camera and, and the video quality and the battery life. It was just amazing. And I was actually away the other week and I, I was using this camera again. We were, we were up a kind of central Persia in Scotland uh, and I was using this at night time and I was trying to take more photographs with it to get to grips with it and I really am impressed with this camera. I'm not a photographer guys, I'm really not and I'm not the best guy at you know recording videos either, you know I'm not the, the best filmmaker out there but this is the type of camera that can make you know difficult shots and, uh, and amazing footage. This camera can make it very, very simple. It really does simplify the process of recording good footage. So, um, you know, this it's not a perfect solution. No solution is, the, you know, as I was saying, there's a little bit of wobbling, etc. But we had a great day out. We recorded some clips. And hopefully in the future, I'm going to pick up a different mic anyway. But hopefully once I get a better microphone and I play around with the settings a little bit more, I can hopefully get out more with this camera and get more footage for you guys and do different styles of videos. What I will say though, if I can see it, so way over here, this tripod, this is the tripod that we used on the day. And you know, this tripod works really well. I just slide it in like this. I reviewed this years ago. I used to use it with my Canon M50. Um, what I would say is that when you've got the camera, which is like 600 and something grams, and then you've got the lens, which is over 400 grams, and then you've got this tripod, which is a couple of hundred grams, it does get heavy. Like you're holding it like this and after a while your arms start shaking because you're walking and it's it's quite a lot of weight. It really is quite a lot of weight to be carrying around. That's something I'll, I'll have to tackle in the future. I can see myself perhaps picking up a smaller compact. You know, if I'm going out all day long, 
working all day long. I'd, I'd, I'd maybe be tempted to go for a lighter solution, even if the video quality isn't as good. And, and you know, just like everything, you're trying to find that balance between weight and cost and video quality and all that. But as far as this camera goes, I, I've been very, very impressed. But clearly, I've got a lot to learn about filming outside and getting good audio. But many thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the previous video where me and Michael were out in the car. Many thanks to Michael for joining me and messing around with the camera all day. But stay tuned, guys. I'll try and do more uh, clips with this over the next few months and get out more uh, and try and actually leave this office. But thanks for watching, guys. I'll speak to you all very soon. Take care.